feels there should be less matches played, that you should only play about four pre-season and start, I suppose, mid-February, uh, early March. Oh, Actually, I was going to bring the letter that I received from the Geelong Football Club in 1948 with me, because it says, you know, dear Bob, we're happy to have you uh, with the club, and we want you to start training on March such and such a date, and there was four weeks before the season started. Yeah, but you had talent. You didn't have to be running oh, well, around. Well, I didn't uh, have like to train. I know. admit that. Uh, yes. yes, you didn't have to, Wolf. That you came from Ballarat, didn't you? From Golden Point. Yeah. That's where the league's Rory. most successful coach of all time came from. Who? Oh. Jack fellow that's got a 100% record in, foot, in AFL, VFL. Alan Joyce. No. Oh, he's got 100%. He's got 70, 80, he's got 85. Who's got 100%? He's got a very high percentage. A gentleman called Charlie Climo. One season, won the premiership, 81% winning record of matches won. Yeah, but he didn't know Alan Joyce would be better than that. And he won the Knight Cup and he won the premiership. This fella's got a 100% record, Ernie. Can you go further than that? How could he have a 100% record? Well, he only one. coached one year. Oh. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Wolf. Right. <laughs> Now, let's fix that up. Yeah, well, anyway, the pre I think we should have a, a pre-pre-season <laughs> yeah, competition. A pre-pre-season? A pre-pre-season yeah. competition now. Well, that's right, and keep going. The VFA wanted to run a pre-pre-season competition, didn't they? Over, well, yes. Over... It's not a bad idea, a but summer you can't competition. But you can't play football in this weather. If you play ridiculous. in Darwin, you can play in this weather. Well, yeah, but it's different in Darwin than down here. Jimmy's I mean, Essendon never win in Darwin. No, they don't really. Do they? No, they don't. They Jimmy's don't. wearing his hat tomorrow. Well, well I was going to say he's that... He's got permission to wear his cap. Who has? Jimmy Steins. Has he? Yes. Yeah. 29 has to be degrees. Dark. 29 degrees Jakovic, today. Jakovic works at Channel 9. He was seen... Well, he appears at Channel 9. Didn't do much work in the staging. And he told me that he's going to wear sunglasses. <laughs> he did. I wouldn't be surprised. Jack, I'll do anything. Who was the last footballer to wear glasses, Simon? Trivia. Oh. Jeff Blethen. Yes. No, there was a Carlton fella after that. There's oh, a Carlton yes, fella. Uh, fella South, oh, Southcombe. 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 Yes, Southcombe. Yes, well Southcombe. See? Oh, I we know right. what I thought it was Jeff. Don't start on us, <laughs> I tell you what, it, it, it may not be a competition, but maybe we can get our listeners to design a hat suitable for playing on hot days. Well, what about the hey, one that... Let's see that, if we get uh, some reaction. There's a few good designs around at the moment, isn't it? What yeah. about the, the Ivan's, Ivan's one, the Legionnaire's cap? Oh, yeah, but you could be, you know, you're running away from your opponents, flapping in the background. You could grab it, couldn't you? Well, well, well you could be get around it done the in Lycra. Hey, hey, you could get it done in Lycra now. Did Jack Mueller, Jack Mueller, Melbourne, yes. did Jack Mueller wear gloves when he played football? Someone well, told me they saw a photo of him with gloves playing football. Well, he may Boxing have, because he had very... Sh he would have only had to have a couple of fingers in one of them, a couple right. of stalls in one, because he only had about two fingers on one hand. What happened to the others? He had an accident with them. Oh. Genuinely. Right, run over um, by a tram, picking his nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you reckon about playing football in 29 degree heat? Well, it's very... Uh, I think that it's probably a little difficult. There's no two ways about it. And I'm quite, I'm quite in accord with Jimmy Steins. All the latest stories are, if you're out in the sun for any good length of time and you're fair-skinned, as an Irish fellow would be, because they're, most of the people over in England and that have got beautiful skins, haven't they? They never really see the sun. Just like you, Bobby. You've got lovely right. skin for That's your right. age. Well, yeah, you've I wear it. Yourself. My wife makes me wear one of those caps, actually. <laughs> Does she? What, to bed? <laughs> no, not to bed, Ed. Now, uh, what about Langford's criticism? Now, Ernie, you are a bit incensed when you read that. No, no, well, I just feel sorry for Dermy, he's a mate of mine. He gets fined every time he opens his mouth, so Langford automatically in the Hawthorne Football Club <laughs> should be fine. Because they've had a go. Automatically. Well, 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 the Fourth Reich always have a go at somebody, don't they? If they say anything, and uh, Langford's come out and he's a player and he's got no right to say anything. So he party. was actually at the AFL when he said it, wasn't was he? he? Yes, he was there. It was the <laughs> press meeting where they were talking about it. And he probably, in one way, has got a point, but I do feel that three umpires, if they can work together quite comfortably... How can three people think the same? There's never well, been a good well, umpire since the game well, stopped. Got, we've no, got umpires three. think I the same. I hate umpires. Well, I'm umpires in, think completely differently. Fancy having three of them. Yes, but they're I won't there. know who to abuse. They're there being taught all the time. Oh, the game is just... They're messing and around with there the are not very many games now. I mean, there are mostly three Saturday. I mean, they're not as though there are seven every Saturday, so you have yeah. to have 21 umpies. Mm. You could use them all the time, really, and they would almost become word perfect at it. All right, fellas. That's enough. Chit-chat. Oh. Can, can I send a call to my mother-in-law in Adelaide? 
Gene yeah. O'Brien and my mate Dale Cleese from Mount Camby. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. All right. You, okay. you, what was, where would you send it to? My mother-in-law, Jane. Your mother-in-law, she a crow supporter or is she just a crow? She's a crow supporter. Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not allowed to do that. It says that in the BBC book. I, I, I haven't got one of those. I'll get you one. Well, you'll get one now. Uh, yeah, well, if you, in case you don't know what you're listening to, you're listening to the great Southern Grandstand. <laughs> Greg Chalice and Peter Abrisk are back again this year with more topical footy poems. And uh, Greg's first up. Good to uh, see you again. And uh, what have you got for us Thanks, this week, Clay. Greg? I've got a few reflections on season 93. By taking on the Sydney job, Barassi proved he's brave. But I'm afraid that hapless mob might send him to his grave. John Northey, following his heart, back home to Tigerland, found, despite a healthy start, they too were under man. We saw Brisbane move to Brisbane and breaking Buckley in and the fight for him in Melbourne only widened Nathan's grin. The D's in Barming took too long, then they came into their own, whilst Collingwood did nothing wrong before the pointed bone. The Hawks refused to grow too old, the Eagles flew less high, we marvelled at how Ablett gold and Modra touched the sky. The wheels fell off at Footscray and the Saints got Winmart out. And Fitzroy survived another day, but linger on in doubt. Dennis Pagan's resurrected ruse had the most dramatic rise, whilst Parkin took the Navy Blues just one step from the prize. The Cats rode high on Ablett's game and had us in a spin, but then forgot the basic aim. The object is to win. In the early rounds, the punters said the Bombers were too green, but Sheedy had a wiser head and Gavin Wanganine. One thing that really worries me from what the Dons have shown is how good will those babies be when they are fully grown? But the threat to our security, which holds far greater fears, is the growing crow maturity beyond their tender years. As focus turned to other sport, spring racing and the cricket, the football world all spared a thought for luckless Derek Kickett. Greg Chellis with his uh, review of 1993. Football is stupid, and the blokes who play are stupid too. The Great World Series debates from ABC TV, starring the fabulous Andrew Denton and Wendy Harmer, are now available on cassette. These great debaters contest, is laughter better than sex? That Australia needs the royal family. That God has no sense of humour. And that football is stupid. These are blokes who wear their names on the outside of their jumper. Available on cassette from ABC shops, ABC centres and good music stores. I think, don't think there's any doubt, Ernie. Laughter would have to be better than sex, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, enough said. Now, listen, a little later on, we've got to have... Uh, well, 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 gosh, I, I was going to call it the shame file. Is, is the bearded one still got a copyright on that? We might get your uh, Brownlow medal chances and uh, who you think might be grand finalists uh, a little started, later on. Yes. I know, well, and then we'll <laughs> store it up and we'll come, out. <laughs> we'll come out. Well, last season, we had an enjoyable time uh, talking with Roy Masters in the program. Program. Now, for those who don't know Roy, he's a former Sydney Rugby League coach and now one of the nation's foremost sports writers. And he's either a Fitzroy or a Sydney Swans supporter. I'm not really sure. What is it, Roy? Oh, mate, I'd have to be... Oh, can I be dual? I mean, you people are a bit by down here on, on your attitudes to certain things. I mean, you embrace both codes now. Why can't I be a bit, bit by about, uh, about my football teams? Have you ever been accused of being by, Ernie? Yes, quite often. <laughs> <laughs> you went up in Sydney the other night, Ernie, were you? Yes, I was in Sydney. Yeah, why? At, at the carnival. Oh, no, no, I go to Sydney every week. Oh. I'm, I'm a rugby... I follow Penrith. I know, Actually, I know I'm, that. I've know. followed him for about 25 years now. That's right, Ernie. Your, yeah. your allegiance to the Panthers is well known. Yes. Yeah. How are you, Roy? Good, mate. Yeah. Now, the reason I invited, uh, invited Roy in today is uh, not just because he's a, a good bloke, but, but uh, with our Davis Cup team toiling away in St Petersburg, Roy has recently returned from a, a rather eventful trip. Do you think that's a nice way of putting it, Roy? Certainly eventful if you try and get into Russia without a visa, as I did. <laughs> what end, happened? End up in Castlereagh in a little slammer for about an hour and a half. Oh, well, I'd just come back from Lillehammer. I only had about four days back in Australia. Um... 
from covering the Winter Olympics and then I had to go again. Somehow or other, the facts indicating that I had to have a visa was lost in the mail as I was, you know, travelling and... Uh, I assume with the breakup of the Soviet Union, you know, they were liberated and weren't like the Americans and the French and, you know, the people that sort of supposedly introduced liberty by insisting on visas. So I uh, I just uh, got out to the Qantas and the kindly people at Qantas said, look, you could have a trouble in Japan. I got through Japan and uh, finally I got into the Soviet Union, but there were many nets there. There were, <laughs> <laughs> there were many, many accusations about why I didn't have a visa, but, but finally, of course, as we all know, the great American dollar speaks a lot of languages. Oh, mm. does it really? A little bit oh, of yeah, I, pay, I had to pay for a visa. Mm. Fair enough. Now, what were you trying to get in there for? Well, I was part of a delegation of people uh, that went to uh, Moscow in an attempt to assess uh, the, whether we could get any coaches from the former Soviet Union to assist Australia as it gears up for the 2000 Olympics. Essentially, we have at the 2000 Olympics in Sydney to uh, have to have competitors in a l large number of sports where we are traditionally weak, such as handball and, uh, and wrestling and um, judo and sports even in recent times where we've become a little weaker such as track and field some aspects of track and field boxing we're declining in in an area there uh, russia has an oversupply of coaches it was the sort of the the, the coach factory of the soviet union and um, it's um, got a tremendous oversupply. Australia has very good relationships with Russia now. We got their bid and uh, we got their vote for the for the Sydney Games. And, and in fact, uh, they uh, <coughs> they geared up a few votes for us. Since the breakdown of the Soviet Union, or what appears to be that, has the athletics, uh, the feed for the athletics dropped away? The money has. The, the money has. money's d yeah. dramatically dropped. Still, I mean, it's a great system. They managed to top the medal count at the Winter Games in Lillehammer. Yes. Uh, they are absolutely committed to restore in Russia what they formerly had in all of the Soviet Union, but they admit that they've got tremendous monetary problems and, and everywhere you go in Moscow there is decay and decline and, uh, and lack of maintenance. So would you see uh, coaches, the people who are trying to pick up, are very keen to get, come to a place like Australia? Absolutely. Simon, you could you could get a top coach over there for thirty thousand US. Yeah. Yep. Without any problem. Oh gee, a few footy clubs might yeah. be looking around for that. Also yeah. over there, probably why they do so well. It's a bit like a fighter living in the ghettos in New York, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, what hope you got in Russia if you're not an intellect or a sportsman? Well, that's that's so right. So if you can get out of the ghettos there, you well, know. Well, coaches are both, as you know, <laughs> intellects and sportsmen. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be a coach for a million quid. <laughs> now, what was the result of the trip? Are we going to have about 3,000 uh, Russian coaches coming to our shores? No, no, what we've done, <laughs> we've identified uh, 10 sports, both the Australian Sports Commission and the AOC have identified 10 sports. We're trying to get the money to... Uh, to uh, ensure that we give $100,000 for two years to each of those 10 sports, two million bucks, and uh, but we have the uh, selection over the coaches because a lot of these sports that are administratively weak and probably haven't got the mechanism to support, support the coaches. Away from the coaches, Roy, uh, could we, uh, perhaps as a, as a rugby or as an Australian rules group, go and find young fellows as they did perhaps in uh, Ireland? like Jimmy Steins. Yeah. Are there athletes over there that could be brought here at 15 and 16? Huge well, fellows. Absolutely. The, the talent identification programs that, that, that the modern sports institutes have today, I mean, yeah. they can identify specifically the type of player that you need for your That's game, right. given the fact that you've got a large number of physical requirements for the different positions that you have. And uh, they, they could identify them, and uh, and uh, sure, the same as they do with the rowing now. I mean, you don't mm. you don't have to be anywhere near the water. They just put you on the well, machines. Well, look, and look, we got the four the, the lightweight champion juniors of the world were four girls uh, identified by an AOS program, and yeah. I think they were they were just you know basketballers or something. Now, with that. the coaches, you said ten sports. How many oh. coaches does that mean come out? Ten. Well, <laughs> well, that's what I want to know. Are you just getting one coach per sport? And he used to be a school teacher. <laughs> I would say with, with a... Oh, hang on, hang on, I want to hear this. Well, with a budget of 100000 per 
per sport per year. And thirty thousand dollars per coach, and hundred thousand goes three and a third coaches per sport. Well, no, that's yeah. US dollars. I'd, oh, I'd, say, I'd say only one. We'd probably only oh. afford be able to afford one because there's oh. a certain infrastructure that's got to go with the coach. Right. So you got to pay a few people. Could off you imagine there. a Russian coach in football with Sam Kekovich as his assistant <laughs> coach? Oh, that'd be... How'd the players be? <laughs> <laughs> that'd so, be good. Wouldn't it? And so, how many KBG KGB agents does that include in the coaches coming over? <laughs> Mate, we get sort of way, extras. We get these, all the extra people following them over, don't we? Well, yeah. with your eye on the sky down here and your three umpires, you blokes should be able to tell the KGB a few things. <laughs> <laughs> now, a little closer to home. Now, been, there's been some criticism of the Sydney Swans recruiting, and I heard you on telly the other mm. Sunday saying, oh, you thought Kickett was a great buy. He is a great buy. Yeah, good player. He's a bloody good player. Yeah. I saw him do something on the football field that 99 out of 100 leagueies wouldn't be game to do, and that is the ultimate praise, courage in rugby league, as we well know. I saw him in a game between North Melbourne and Essendon, a game where North Melbourne, I think, were leading by about 40 points, and they came storming back. And he, in order to protect his own goal, took a ball over the back of his head and in the process of doing so had to throw his delicate loin area, as we should say, against the goalpost. Now, you know, you don't hurt you when you're taking a ball, do you? No. And he did. See, yeah. see how Roy did that? He didn't mm. even get a book of instructions. Very delicate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he kicked, he beat Footscray on his own last year, kicked nine goals in three quarters. And he, he took the most magnificent yeah. mark in I the I don't think he had a kick in the first uh, quarter, and he kicked nine goals. Yeah, he's, killed he's, us. He's, he's got to lose a little bit of uh, put a bit rotundness. Of beef on yeah, he's put a bit of beef on, but he's prone to oh, that, but a good yeah. training... Oh, no, I think the Sydney Swans are good. I think Peter Flanders is a good get for the, the Sydney Swans. I think people are going to say... For the home ground. For the home ground, he is. I think playing at Wave. No, he's a good player. Cricket ground. The old story, limited opportunities because there's lots of good players at Essendon. I think with the chance, I think you'll do all right. If you had been on the match committee at Footscray, who would have you taken, Richard Osman or Dermot Brereton? Well, I'd take... No, well, not you for the first seven <laughs> games, I wouldn't take... Dermot Brereton's going to play some footy this year and Richard Osman mightn't, so I'd have to go... Yeah, You've got to there. understand the mentality of Sydney a bit too. Sydney is, whether we like it or not, it's a city that's in love with celebrities. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Whether you're good or bad... Flamboyant. Um, that's, that's right. That's right. It's, it's a shimmering city. And uh, and Dermot's a sort of bloke that'd go well up there, you know, with his... With his and we we will resurrect his groin. Stomping around the place up there will do well. Oh, I like the uh, comment that he Jason... He should never have got seven weeks. That's a joke. Oh, yeah, but you're biased. Nah, it's an absolute joke. Just, it works really on your television program. You're biased. But um, it's um, it was interesting here. Jason Dunstall talked to uh, Dermot the other day on the, uh, the the Channel 9 footy show. The new and, footy uh, show on and Dunst like Yeah. And Dunstall said to him, he said, I see you're giving uh, the Sydney Swans uh, about as much service as you've given us for the last two years. I don't think, I don't think Dermy liked that one all that well. They've been but anyhow, practicing sledging each other for a while. You've got to also remember that Torthorne have not paid Dermot Brereton either. He hasn't been paid for over two years no, in his defence as well. Yeah, know. that's fair. Well, we're only he doesn't need the money. He doesn't say, need the why money. Why do you got fined 10000 Diane, you find 10000 when the club don't pay you? You know. Right, well now, we know, all know that Roy got out of Russia. Well, there's somebody that uh, is still in the old Soviet uh, uh, Republic. Uh, well, that was at what used to be. And it's uh, David Mackay. I think he's going to miss his first footy season in many, many years because David is in a place where Aussie rules absolutely reign supreme. It's Bishkek, uh, which is the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Oh. And um, David is on the line. Hello, David. Good morning, Clark. How are you? I'm extremely well. Uh, who do the Bishkek uh, Blues play today? The Bishkek Blues play, play the uh, Kazakhstan Bombers. Do they? <laughs> Bishkek. Now, David, what in the heck are you doing over there? Uh, over here trying to do a little bit of work, Clark. Uh, in fact, we're coming back uh, later in the week, but uh, looking forward to it. But you're right, uh, I'm really... Uh, Disappointed that I'm missing the big one today, particularly the MCT with, uh, with Essendon and the West Coast Eagles, which should be a terrific start to the season. David, uh, Simon Madden here. How's your Kyrgyzstani going? Has it really improved, has it? Oh, <laughs> sensational. <laughs> Not allowed to say that on the ABC. <laughs> and actually, did, uh, did the game get headlines in the sporting pages? Uh, don't, don't see so much of it, Bob, unfortunately, over here. Um, but we can get Radio Australia, so we've been able to keep in touch with uh, the Foster's Cup series. So what are you actually doing over there? As little as possible and happily getting paid for it. No, we're, we're working on... What do you work for the government, do you, David? Kyrgyzstan Employment Service. What? The Kyrgyzstan Employment Service. Now, you're, what, you're sort of setting up a CES over there. That's very much like 
like it. Uh, they've, they've actually modelled their um, their employment service here on the CES, and it's going pretty well. So, so they're looking for a lot of unemployed. It'll be a KES, will it? Lord, um, most of the people here are unemployed, but uh, the, the country's being restructured and uh, the industry is developing, but uh, albeit fairly slowly, as it is in most communist countries. Any jobs for football commentators over there or television commentators like Ernie? <laughs> could, he have a, could he have a morning in Kurdistan? <laughs> How are you, David? Yeah, yeah. How are you, David? Good, thanks. Yeah, it's Ernie. Ernie, how are you? Oh, I thought you were going to say Ernie, you. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie Dingo. <laughs> uh, what sort of sport do people play over there? Uh, the, the main sport uh, that they play here is uh, volleyball, strangely enough. Uh, they did have, a, they did have a, a, a person who was competing in the Winter Olympics, but um, unfortunately they didn't have enough money to get them, uh, to get them up to Norway. So uh, whilst they were selected, uh, they didn't actually take part in the, in the games. Could have skied there, couldn't you? Well, that's what I thought. It's any any it potential footballers over there that you might bring back to Carlton? Well, I'm not sure about Carlton. I might be able to bring a few others that are, that are struggle and, uh, and, put, and put a few of the other sides at bay. But no, there's some big guys here, but uh, they're, they're pretty athletic and pretty fit. But uh, as I say, their main sport is volleyball and they do play a bit of soccer. And how's the food over there, David? Um, I can't say that on radio. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I'll be looking forward to uh, a good steak and uh, sausage and three veg when I get home. So you're saying that you've got a new uh, diet plan, the Kyrgyzstan diet plan, is that right? Yeah, Jenny Craig could do pretty well over here. <laughs> well, David, we'll uh, let you go and you can uh, get the uh, aerial up outside your apartment there and get it all primed up for some footy. Well, we're looking forward to it, Clark, and uh, give my regards to the rest of the team for today, and I'm sorry I'm not there. OK, well, that's uh, David Mackay, who's uh, over there in uh, Beshek, the, which is the capital of Kurdistan. And, uh, well, I think uh, David will be keen to get home. And uh, thanks very much, Roy. Yeah, there you are. You could have gone on I a thought you were going to ask him, is he going to have his way with all those Kurds? Oh. 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 Very good, Roy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think on that note, uh, we might leave this.